Ladies and gentlemen, my next guest this evening is an Emmy-nominated actor you know as Cousin Richie from The Bear. Go get him, Richie. Thank you, Chef. Walking out on on table nine? Chef! All right, look alive, team. <clears throat> Almost there, just another seven courses. <laughs> I know you guys have probably waited a very long time to be here. Thank you. Uh, but I couldn't live with myself if I let this beautiful family leave Chicago without sampling one of my personal favorite dishes, Pequod's deep dish. No. Oh, you oh, did not hear God. me say that. <gasps> Manja, baby. <laughs> oh, my. God, you all are wonderful. No, stop it. You're wonderful. <laughs> Please welcome to The Late Show, Evan Moss Backrack. <laughs> so nice to have you on. Thank you. Uh, listen, uh, you, you, you've been nominated from Hell to Breakfast for your portrayal of, of, of cousin, of cousin Richie on, on The Bear. Congratulations on that. Thanks. I mean, obviously, congratulations on turning in a performance Thanks. that everybody, everybody loves, including cool. myself. What was the audition process like for this for you? Um, I, <laughs> I was in London working on something, and with, this was in... Was it Andor? It was Andor. It's also your fantastic in Andor. <laughs> Thank you. All too soon. You yeah. left us all too soon. I know. I know. It was special while it lasted. Uh, we, um, and I had to, this was in peak COVID time, and so my family was there, and everyone was quarantining, and we were in this big loft. And um, my daughters were doing Zoom school. I think my little one was maybe in fifth grade. My older daughter was in 10th grade at that time. And I had to, to do a scene with Jeremy, and it was a big confrontation scene. About, the, about making the sauce right. And, you know, I was, I had my, my chains on. At this point, I was still sort of developing how, you know, how I wanted to play this guy. Sure. And, uh, but I knew, I knew it, was, it was at maximum volume. And my little daughter at one point ran over to me and was just like, she's like, we, we can hear you. <laughs> we can hear everything. She's saying. in an online First, classroom. First, she thought I was yelling at my other daughter, which is not really how I communicate with her. I, like, I'm, that's not really... Uh, my vibe as a dad. Um, so that was shocking. But then she was like, oh, we, we can, uh, all of Miss Leah's class. Here's, here's everything you're They're saying. They're learning new vocabulary yeah, words. Exactly. That's, yeah, that's a good way of saying it. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Did you ever wait? I was a, never a proper waiter. I was a cater waiter. Yeah. Right when I graduated from college. It was one summer. I got a, uh, the clip-on tie. I think I was making something like $17, $18 an hour, which felt really, really great. Sure, you know? on the day, yeah. They, um, I was enthusiastic. I love it. All the other cater waiters, they called me speedy because I was into my job and they were pretty burned out and cynical and over it. And uh, I, um, I maybe did seven or eight, like, bar mitzvahs and weddings. This is in New York and, you know, in New Jersey and in the fancy parts of Connecticut and upstate. And... Um, I got fired one day because I, um, we, this is like late 90s, and there was some sort of oat cuisine idea about this, like, um, like a cannoli shell, I guess, but like stuffed with mescaline greens. And like a it, vertical salad? Like a vertical, like a vertical wobbly salad that I had to kind of like walk over. I think it was in Westport, Connecticut. I'd walk over this hill, and you know, we we're all in a procession, procession. Everyone was like, everyone put it down at once. And so I, put mine down, and it fell over and exploded on this really fancy dressed woman who I think was, if I remember this correctly, like daytime talk show host, Jenny Jones. Oh. And she jumped up and she was horrified and she, you know, she exclaimed like what, what, whatever she was wearing, you know, I don't know exactly what it was, but you sure, know, sure. it was something that, you yeah. Know. And um, it was Italian, I think. And, um, it cost more than $17 an hour. Yeah, and I was quickly ushered to the back, and I just sort of had to hang out in the garage as they finished up and cleaned up, and that, that was the extent of my cater waiter career. We don't, I only got this angle right here. 
Oh, okay. This is this is you, and you're doing a scene here with. Is it just Gene Wilder? Yeah, yeah, that's when Gene was Wilder. This? This, so this is my first first movie I ever made. First TV. It was a TV movie for A and E. It was called Murder in a, in a Murder in a Small Town, 1930s Stamford, Connecticut. He played a guy called Cash Carter, who was a Broadway director who had such an eye for the truth, such a nose for the truth that he could sort of divine when a criminal was telling the truth or not. He, he, his best friend was a detective who would enlist him to sort of help him solve crimes. So as someone who worked with, uh, with uh, Gene Wilder, what was it like to start working with the guy who looks like <laughs> Gene Wilder's grandson, Jeremy yeah. Allen White? <laughs> yeah. Because everyone has noticed this. Did you notice it the first time you walked on the set? I instantly felt very comfortable with him. I laid down in his arms. We kind of... <laughs> yeah. You asked him if he can solve murders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to ask you about your Chicago accent. I really, I like it because it's not too heavy. Some people like go like, they make a nice sandwich over there. You over by there, you yeah. talk like that from Chicago. Yeah. But you don't hit it that hard. Where, what, what, how did you, uh, what was your model? How did you land that plane well, so softly? It was important to me because I think Richie has such a f understanding and love of Chicago history and the tradition. And he's also not a Chicago native. He's someone that had moved there. He's sort of an army brat. Th that, and but he sounds like he's from Chicago. Yeah, but I think some of that is a little bit of a performance. If you see, like, oh, if you I pay see. really close, it's like the the accent is stronger sometimes. You know, when he when he's out when he's out sort of performing in some sort of situation, it's a little bit performative. Yeah. His accent gets stronger, and then it kind of gets more subtle. But um, I have, yeah, I got like Teamster buddies there from when I when I first was there in Chicago making a movie, and I hung out with them. I remember as soon as I got off the plane for the second season. I was like, okay, it's been a while. I gotta, I gotta figure out, I gotta get my Chicago back. And I called my friend Rob Martucci and he said, he said, Evan, come down. He gave me some address somewhere. And I, I showed up and it was a bowling alley. <laughs> and we just, so it's like right, right back in it. And he wasn't even bowling. He was just like hanging out at the bar, eating hot dogs and drinking beer. <laughs> like we were just like watching people bowl. I was like, oh, okay, I'm back. It's quick. Yeah. Well, Evan, lovely yeah. to meet you. Yeah, Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> the Bear. He's streaming now on Hulu. Evan Moss Backrack, everybody. We'll be right back.